Hello and welcome to what is part two of my Royal Mail video. I have an exciting video for you today, an addendum to add some extra bits to what we may have missed in the first video. Uh, it might be funny, it might be slightly controversial, and it definitely is going to involve Steve from Minecraft. Say hello, Steve. Yeah, hello, mate. You'll see why he's Australian in a minute. Well, because the front fell off. And Velma from Scooby-Doo. So hello, Velma. Hello, mate. Again, you'll see why they're Australian in a little minute. Well, the front fell off in this case, by all means, but it's very unusual. Let's dive into it. Script. Good afternoon. Just before Christmas, I published a video detailing the Royal Mail's plan to replace their fleet of 41,500 vehicles with fully electric vans. Well, there's two things to say here. Firstly, I had no idea the video would be so popular, 180,000 views now as I record this, uh, and I'm thankful that it was. Some of the comments that the video generated were wonderful, enlightening, and terrifying. Um, so, since the video was published, there's definitely some more information to add. I do need to point out that I think the figures were slightly flawed, but as I said in the first video, those figures were coming from um, an article written by a UKIP person. But I'm kind of glad that the figures were a little bit overblown because it has brought the subject to a much wider audience. You know, the way clickbait and stuff goes, if something's over the top, then it gets people engaged. And if people are engaged, then it reaches more people. And I'm glad that this has reached more people because of what you're about to see. The major elephant in the room that was neglected in the first video is the chief executive of Royal Mail itself. Yeah, we're going there. It turns out that the elephant in the room also identifies as a fat cat because our man Simon Thompson is on 500 grand a year before pension and bonuses. So that's 40 grand a month before tax. But who cares? It's only money. But it is quite a lot of it. He earns more in a month than a nurse does in a year. But who cares about nurses, right? Because we, don't we just pay them with claps these days? You just clap and then and then the nurses are happy. Uh, anyway, ignoring the gigantic injustices in labour rates relative to the actual real impact a person has on human beings, let's look at Simon Thompson's track record. I feel like I need some music there. Sorry, there's no music. There should have been. You'd think to land a 500 grand a year job, you must have been a total monkey genius in your previous role, right? Well, it's definitely a lot more monkey than genius. Simon Thompson's previous role was managing director of the NHS Test and Trace program. And I've actually been lucky enough to get hold of the original interview footage, the actual video of when he got interviewed for the job. That's coming up in a minute. Just as a bit of background, um, and I did right here. Okay, I had to delete a whole load of words and video there because it's just simply too crazy to fathom. When I was sat in the pub a minute ago having a coffee and writing this script, um, I wrote a lot of words for that section and I just kept getting to a point when I was like, can't say that, that's too much, that's too far, can't say that, delete that. It's the nature of the subject. You end up on thin ice very quickly. So... I won't use my words for this bit. I will simply use the words of Meg Hillier, who was chair of the Public Accounts Committee. She's an MP, a member of parliament. And she said this about the £22 billion spent on test and trace. £22 billion that was looked after by our man Simon when he was managing director. She says this. Despite the unimaginable resources thrown at this project, Test and Trace cannot point to a measurable difference to the progress of the pandemic and on the promise on which this huge expense was justified, avoiding another lockdown, it was broken twice. So, Track and Trace, Test and Trace, cost every single inhabitant of the United Kingdom £326 each. There's four of us in my family. That's £326 times four, just from my house, same for your house and yours and yours. And didn't actually have a quantifiable impact on anything. So what recruitment consultant looked at that track record and invited him in for an interview? Well, as I said, I've been lucky enough to get access 
to the actual footage of the interview. Let's roll the tape. Hello, Simon. I understand that you want the job as Chief Executive of the Royal Mail. Yes, please. Can I ask the salary? Well, it's £500,000 a year. Ah, uh, that'll do. Uh, is that before bonuses and pension? Yes, that's before bonuses and pension. But we should really discuss that later. So can I ask about your previous employment record? I understand you were in charge of Test and Trace. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, we had a budget of £22 billion to create a test and trace system to slow down the pandemic and prevent further lockdowns. Ah, oh, that sounds wonderful. Did it did it slow the pandemic and did it did it stop the lockdowns? Uh no. It had no impact whatsoever on the pandemic and we had uh two more lockdowns afterwards. Really? That sounds like a colossal waste of money. What happened to the pandemic next? Well, a vaccine was developed and a whole lot more money was spent on that to slow the pandemic. Well, that sounds reasonable. Did that stop the pandemic? Uh, no, but we had high hopes for the second vaccine and that, that would. The second vaccine? I've never heard of that before. Surely that worked. Well, no, but the, the third one was gonna be the winner. Three vaccines? All right, okay, so uh, this third one must have done the job, eh? Well, no, nah, not so much, but the booster, well, that one was gonna finish it once and for all. A booster? Four vaccines? What was wrong with the first three? Well, never mind. Did it fix it? Well, nah, not really. So what happened next? Well, the Prime Minister saw decided that we just sort of get on with it. Oh, I understand. It seems like there's quite a lot of money in vaccines, but at least all the people who had the vaccine stayed healthy. Uh... Okay, Simon, we'll leave that there for now. So, let me give you a bit of background to the company. Before the pandemic, we had a net profit of £758 million. Pounds. The staff were due a pay rise, which had already been agreed. You know, the shareholders were getting noisy. So, there's a chap called Daniel Kratinsky. He's a chick bloke. Have you heard of him? Oh, yeah, I think I know the guy. Well, he's a lovely chap. He made a little bit of money buying Russian gas and selling it in the Baltic. He's got shares in Sainsbury's and Foot Locker, and he owns Le Mans newspaper. You know, he's got fingers in pies. Now, what he's looking to do is expand his shareholding, although the UK government is a bit wary. But as you've worked for them before, I'm sure you can help us out there. There's also noises coming from BlackRock Investments. I assume you've heard of them? Oh, yeah, they own pretty much everything. Yeah, so... It's quite a complex situation here. What we need is a man who can get through a ton of money, cause a giant upset and do it quietly without causing a riot. Can you tell me how you do that? Ah, oh, yeah, no problem. This is this is right in my, uh, this is exactly the sort of thing that I'm really good at. So here's what we do. You want to devalue the business and strip the assets and sell out, avoiding the pensions obligations and cutting the costs. It's easy. We could dump the share price by investing in ludicrous things like electric vehicles, which is great because the newspapers will proclaim that an environmental victory, which is so trendy right now. Next, we get rid of all the parcels and the packets. They're a pain. And there's other people doing it anyway. I've heard that Hermes are really good. So let's get rid of, say, 25,000 staff and replace them with new people, but on less pay and without the pension. After that, we can move everyone onto freelance type owner operator contracts and they can pay us to borrow a van and we can pay our performance. Once that's all done, we can look at the infrastructure. The Royal Mail own a ton of property. I'm guessing that a lot of it is legacy property that was probably taxpayer funded. Well, we can sell that off and then we can lease it back, free up the cash, have a massive shareholder party and we can all get rich. Well, Simon, that sounds absolutely great. You are hired. So there we go then, it, it took a lot of hacking into the CCTV to get hold of the uh, the genuine interview footage from, from that interview. Um, but now that you've seen that, hopefully you better understand the situation and you understand that really the goal isn't to replace 41 and a half thousand vans, it's just to tear it all apart. Wow. Thank you everybody who commented, thank you everybody who emailed me, thank you to all the um, Postman, you can't say postmen anymore, can you? Post people. Postmen and women, thank you for getting in touch and for all of your comments that was stating what's going on at what was once a proud British company that is now about to be asset stripped 
in the rawest way possible to make way for a skeleton company that is going to be run by owner drivers. The great Royal Mail, eh? Everything's turning to shit, isn't it? I'm not saying it wasn't safe, it's just perhaps not quite as safe as some of the other ones. It says in the Bible that you should flee fornication and you should call out sin when you see it. So you have a duty to talk about this stuff. Also says you should vacuum your car after you've been on holiday, but I haven't done that yet either. 